Introducing NASM One, NASM's ultimate membership program. Unlock access to everything your fitness career needs to succeed. Unlimited CEUs, free courses, access to our premium app, and exclusive discounts, all for $35 a month. NASM One is best in class tools, cutting edge certifications, confidence in your craft, and everything you do as a personal trainer made easy so we can achieve our greatest goals together as one. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today we are going to talk about the said principle. The said principle is an important principle when it comes to understanding the human body, and it is a principle that we talk about in our textbook and that we, in a way, base so many of our programming decisions, our exercise selection decisions, uh, our metabolic work, the cardiorespiratory work that we do, everything we do really is coming from this idea of working towards training specificity. And specifically, what do you want to accomplish? Now, sometimes if you're looking for general health, then that might be a little bit different, but you can still work in the said principle because that way we look at adaptations and keeping the adaptations going, finding new adaptations so that your body is making progress And so let's look at how some of that progress is done. So the said principle specifically means, here we go, specific adaptations to imposed demands. S-A-I-D, specific adaptations to imposed demands. That is the principle of specificity. Now, the principle of specificity, let's just kind of talk about it a little bit. It says, and this is from your text directly, the principle... um, Stating that the body will adapt to specific demands that are placed on it is known as specific adaptations to impose demands. And so if you want to work your muscles so that they get better at endurance, there is a way to do that. We train endurance to reap the reward of endurance. If you want to work your muscles to become stronger, maximally stronger, single effort or uh, only a few efforts to become maximally stronger, then you will change your workout so that you are lifting heavier weights for fewer repetitions, and that will provide said strength gains, specific strength gains for max strength. So when we look at the said principle, we're looking at specificity of several things specificity of your energy systems, so the anaerobic and aerobic systems, the specificity of the mode of training that you're doing, the specificity of the groups of muscles that you're working and the movement patterns that you're going through, and then there's specificity of your posture and how you hold your body up. And I think that these are all very important to point out But let's look at some of the the other things that we're going to have to pay attention here. If we look at specificity, there is something called mechanical specificity. And mechanical specificity refers to the weight and movement placed on the body based on Schoenfeld's work in 2011. And the example is if you want to get better at muscular endurance in your legs, you're going to do lighter weight and higher repetitions. You want to get stronger maximally, you will do heavier lifts. That is mechanical specificity. And we think about mechanical specificity, I think, in our programming a lot when we look at stabilization, strength, and power, and how we move and the intensity of the weight, the weight that we put on. We then say, okay, well, we're not done yet, because then there's neuromuscular flexibility. So moving from mechanical, neuromuscular flexibility refers to the speed of the contraction and the exercise selection. So how fast are we moving and what exercises are we doing where we're playing with neuromuscular specificity when it regards to speed? 
So it says the development of higher levels of stability while pushing chest exercises will need to be performed controlled. And you might do unstable surfaces or unstable with like a, a cable or a band and work them at slower speeds as you work to develop stability. But if you want higher levels of strength, neuromuscular specificity is going to state that you have to be in a more stable environment you can't be focusing on a, a, a BOSU ball movement if you're trying to go for these maximal loads. And therefore, emphasis is on strengthening the prime movers, not the stabilizers. So we look at then, can I lift that heavy? Now, one of the things where it's not whether or not I disagree with NASM's OPT model. It's just that NASM's OPT model puts constraints on some things. And those constraints are there for especially new users. And I've talked about the idea of personal trainers and chefs, right? You're a chef or a cook, and right now you follow a recipe, and you follow a recipe to get specific things. And as you get better as a cook or a chef, then you start thinking, well, what about this? What about this flavor? And I'm going to individually address this for a person based on outcome. So here's, here's my differentiator. You can do stabilization endurance fast. You can do faster movements, but everything's going to be along a spectrum, right? So if you want more stability, then the slower movements may be very helpful but as you start to focus on endurance, let's say push-ups, there's some people out there that can do 50 push-ups, but they're not doing 50 push-ups at a 4-2-2 count. They're doing 50 push-ups at explosive movements as fast as they can. Now, the first 30, 35 or 40 maybe are fast, but certainly they slow down. They get slower and slower as you get to your end of capacity. So you train capacity like that, and you can work as a, as a faster movement. For instance, one of the things, excuse me, one of the things that I do is as I work with people, one of my favorite types of trainings where we work in the endurance phase, the stabilization endurance phase of the NASMOPT model, I like to have people do something slow for 10 repetitions. And then with that same weight, as they start to fatigue, see if they can move it faster and get five more reps out. So 10 slowly and then blast out five at the end. All right. So that is working more on neuromuscular efficiency. Now, the reason I do that is also because it adds to the next thing, metabolic specificity, which re really refers to the energy demand that placed on the body. You want more aerobic outcomes, then you do aerobic work to get that. You want better anaerobic outcomes, then you do more anaerobic work. Here's some interesting news that we've learned about. Doing anaerobic work, anaerobic respiratory training, cardiorespiratory training, can help aerobic capacity. However, doing aerobic training does not necessarily help you become more anaerobically fit. Well, ain't that a little something? Well, I want to start to develop maximal power, resistance training. I need longer rest periods. I need to renew my ATP stores. And so if my exercise demand is high, then I need to focus on my anaerobic pathways. I need to also increase the amount of rest that I have. Now, to add in complexities, you can work on your capacity. So how, can, how much can you anaerobically push without fully recovering? So that might be anaerobic endurance. And that's a thing. It just may not be the best thing for you or your clients. It may be the superb thing. How do you know? You find out what they need. You find out what their goals are. You find out what those outcomes are. And then you train them for it. And I think that it's important to identify the specificity of training. Now, not all, it doesn't always work this way. And this is one of the examples that 
uh, it, it's kind of become part of the NASM lure where there was a lineman that had come in and worked with um, our president at the time, Mike Clark. And he he's supposed to do a 225 pound bench press as many times as possible. And he could only get like 20 something, 22. Uh, that's not re that's not good for a NFL lineman. And they basically did assessments and they're like, your pecs are strong, your, your triceps are strong, your anterior delts are very strong, but your stabilizers and your shoulder are very weak. And so once you identify the, specifically the problem, so he was trying to lift heavier weights to get the heavier, to get the outcomes, right? Specific adaptations to impose demand. So he imposed heavy weights to get better at heavy weights. He, well, heavy weights for him, 225. Uh, it's not a heavy weight for him. That's certainly endurance, which he's moving as fast as possible. Again, that's not a 422 movement. So he's doing that as fast as possible. So you want to get better at that. You train that. But when you find out the specific issue, then the specific adaptations to impose demands become even more specificer. Specificer. So then you can identify and say, well, there's some rotator cuff issues that need to be addressed. So let's specifically address the rotator cuff. And so I think for six weeks, they didn't even do a bench press the entire time. They worked on stabilizing the shoulder, doing shoulder stabilization activities, doing a little more unstable work like cable and dumbbells. They did dumbbell presses as well. But six weeks later, he got under the bar, absolutely blew his numbers out of the water and never did specifically what he was training to do. But that was because they did a much better job specifying what was needed to get it. Now, if you identify specifically what needs to be strengthened and you say, let's just keep doing bench press with 225 because that's what I got to get better at, you're not solving a problem. So identifying, therefore, one of the reasons why we talk about doing assessments, see what we can learn about an individual and then apply specifically what it is they need to get what it is they want. All right. Results-based training. Always work on being a results-based trainer and working in the said principle. Specific adaptations to impose demands is going to help you be that trainer. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family. If you got questions for me, you can reach out. Hit me up on Instagram or threads at dr.rickritchie or email me rick.ritchie at nasm.org. As always, you keep inspiring people to fitness. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.